what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology great to see you and today we will discuss on maha shivratri lord shiva's greatness and something on valentine's day also and that is why i'm wearing this red today yes because this time luckily <laughs> both the festivals both the occasions are in the same day i have heard it's in 14th right valentine's day and maha shivratri so somebody told me make a video on valentine's day. somebody said make a video on lord shiva for maha shivratri then i said why not make a video together <laughs> because we will see how lord shiva is very important for valentine's day oh my god how in the universe is lord shiva who is a yogi he is what is he doing in valentine's day yes 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 he is doing so many things and we will see what we can also do from him yes and so today i will try to connect both the occasions and try to explain what should be done in a valentine's day from seeing the life of lord shiva okay there you go if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe and if you want a consultation for valentine's day <laughs> when you are going to meet your soulmate then you can go to my website below and approach me for a consultation and if you like this video click the thumbs up and yeah some of you have been asking me where are the guest interviews which i have been doing so from monday the uploads will start all right so hang on it's coming <laughs> And yes, before I begin, as I always say, God is there with you all the time. Just look to Him and He will be there for both the occasions. All right. So now, what is Valentine's Day actually? Valentine's Day is very much perverted and misinterpreted and misrepresented and misunderstood in today's society as with so many other things of the past. There's no surprise. But what actually Valentine's Day was... If you go to 40, 50 years back, this is a day which is celebrated in the name of Saint Valentine, who was one of the great uh, saints in the uh, Christian tradition. Yes, so his greatness and his glories, all these things were the hallmark, were the highlights of this day. But now, unfortunately, none of those things are discussed in this uh, day and age of Kali Yuga. In the 21st century, it has become just like a a day where man will go and give a beautiful rose to a girl and that's why they say love at first sight divorce at first fight <laughs> and uh, this year Ma Shivratri is also there on this day so now how in the universe are both these days interlinked yes because let's see what is Valentine's Day Valentine's Day in today's scenario all right means two people are coming together and they decide to walk the path of light life ahead for some time or maybe for the rest of their life but the question is do you know how you are supposed to live should i repeat do you know how you are supposed to live the life which you both will live together from 14th maybe <laughs> or even if you're married do you know how are you supposed to live do you know who is the most uh, talked couple in the scriptures I mean there are many couples like that but one of them uh, are Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati Mother Parvati they are very 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 prominent in the scriptures because from their conversations which they are having with each other lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of things have come yes many many things the sages have documented many many things are there in the scriptures which are nothing but a conversation between Lord Shiva and Parvati and Lord Shiva and Parvati, they represent the perfect couple. Why? No, it's not the reason what you're thinking that he's God or he's a great personality. You know, that's not the only reason. But when I'm saying that they represent the perfect dynamics of a couple, uh, it means that they are exactly doing that which a couple is supposed to do. Yes. Now, what are they doing? They are always discussing about spiritual topics. And the perfect the perfection of their relationship is Parvati is always asking questions and Lord Shiva is always replying. Parvati is asking, Oh, why this is like this? Why this is like that? Yes. And then Lord Shiva is replying, replying, This is like this, this is like that. And from there so many things have come, my God. If only this couple would have not uh, talked, then we would have missed so many things, my God. So the lessons that Lord Shiva is trying to tell us is 
I mean, there are millions of lessons, but pertaining to Valentine's Day is that whenever uh, we are into a relationship with somebody or we are married, yes, instead of just wasting time seeing movies or gossiping about other people, uh, that's what uh, people do, I guess, yes, most of the time. Sometimes we may discuss on some things which are uh, important for our life, like planning the future or planning the kids or something related to work, but in general, we simply waste time, let's be honest, right? Talking about unnecessary things which will never give us any fulfillment in the long run, yes? So instead of talking and wasting time on useless things which will not give us any fulfillment in the long run, we should discuss about the truths of the scriptures, yes? And then there are so many different Jyoti Lingas and so many places these two, Lord Shiva and Parvati have been talking and then those things have been passed on from generations now our discussions may not be passed on like that but at least we can benefit each other yes and in this i would like to go to the fifth canto of Srimad bhagavatam is it fifth or is it seventh i guess it's seventh i'm not very sure <laughs> but it's there in the bhagavatam this is a very 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 famous story this is the story of the great king chitraketu so Chitraketu Maharaj was once uh, Chitraketu was once a king of this earthly realm and then what happened was he got a uh, he didn't have a son yes because he was a king so he wanted somebody who could continue the dynasty yes by being the heir to the throne but unfortunately he didn't have anybody so then what happened he became very sorrowful he became very miserable he became very sad and then one day Narad Muni came to see him, visit him and then Narad Muni asked him, my dear great king, why are you so unhappy? What's the cause of your sorrow? This is related to Lord Shiva actually. At the end you will see how. So then what happened? Chitraketu said, oh great Narad Muni, the problem is I am a king and I have to continue my dynasty and there is no children. So I need a son somehow. And then Narad Muni said, I have looked at your horoscope, you don't have children. <laughs> <laughs> and then Chitraketu said, Oh my goodness, I don't have a son. Uh, what will happen? Who will rule after me? My God, my ancestors will die. <laughs> because nobody will offer the uh, that uh, which is offered to the Pitris, yes. And I will also become a Pitri one day. Then who will offer oblations to me? So I will also suffer. And then Narabuni, uh, he insisted Narabuni very much. Please give me a son. Please, 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 please give me a son. Somehow, who call my crook? At the end of the day, I need a son. That's what he said. And then Narabuni said, okay, I can give you a son. But he will give you the equal amount of suffering as the amount of happiness. Because that happiness is not there in your karma. So if you get it artificially, you will also have to get the equal amount of suffering. Yes. So Narad Muni blessed him with a son and his name was Harsha Shoka. Yes. So Chitraketu had many wives and when he united with one of his wives, uh, he begot this son. Yes. And then what happened? Unfortunately, because this wife uh, gave birth to this son, his affection started increasing more and more for this particular wife. And because of that, there was a lot of jealousy and envy and hatred among the other queens of Chitraketu for this wife. So then what they did was, out of jealousy and envy, they went and gave poison to this child and this child died. And then what happened? One day, Chitraketu saw that in the morning, his son is no more. And then he collapsed completely. And then he was crying, crying, crying. And again, Narad Muni came and Narad Muni said, I told you, this son will give you happiness and suffering. So that is why his name was Harsha Shoka. Harsha means happiness, Shoka means suffering. But you didn't listen to me. So then what happened? Narad Muni said, uh, but I can again make this son alive if you want for some time. And then he, by his powers, blessed this dead child and this child started speaking. And this child started speaking such high level of spiritual wisdom. That when Chitraketu heard it, it hit him very hard. Yes. And then he decided that that's it. I am not taking care of this kingdom and all this materialistic garbage anymore. <laughs> and then he 
uh, started worshipping Lord Vishnu very profusely and then ultimately he attained spiritual perfection. Yes. And then when Lord Vishnu appeared in front of him, then, uh, then he gave up that human body and then he got birth as a heavenly uh, 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 celestial being which is in a higher planetary realm. Yes. So then he became a very highly elevated heavenly being after his human birth because he had seen Lord Vishnu. He was a very powerful being. And he was very, very, very highly elevated spiritually. In, in fact, when he used to speak different big, big uh, other rishis, saints and all these Brahma rishis, you know, all these used to come. Big, big yogis, tapasvis, they used to come and sit and listen when he used to speak. And then what happened? One day, he was roaming with his heavenly queens yes many 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 queens heavenly queens wow very beautiful all of them were millions and billions of tri trillions of times more beautiful than all the miss universes and miss worlds that have taken birth till now combined yes so they were very beautiful very attractive and they were heavenly uh, beings actually yes so their beauty is much more than our beauty here so then Chitra Ketu, he was so elevated, so elevated, so elevated that when he used to be with these beautiful queens surrounded, yes, he used to talk on spirituality. <laughs> so that's very uh, unexpected right? because when you are with the opposite sex, God is perhaps the last thing that is on our heads, right? So uh, Chitra Ketu used to speak about spirituality. And this is how he spent the rest of his life in the heavenly planets. And one final day he came to Kalash. Yes, and when he came to Kalash, what happened? Lord Shiva was sitting there. Lord Shiva was giving a speech. Yes, Goddess, uh, Mother Parvati was also there. And there were big, big sadhus, rishis, demigods. Lord Brahma was sitting, Indra was sitting. So many people were sitting there. Yes, and Chitra Ketu uh, saw this. But... The funny thing was, when Lord Shiva was giving uh, this speech and his topic was renunciation, vairagya, how to be detached, how to give up, how to give up everything, yes, all materialistic things. So then what happened? Chitra Ketu saw this and he thought, okay, let me also go and sit there, yes. But there was something very strange here. Goddess Parvati was sitting in Lord Shiva's lap, yes, and she was embracing him like this and Chitra Ketu saw this <laughs> and Chitra Ketu was amazed at this sight he said my goodness then he thought let me taunt some uh, taunt Lord Shiva for some time and then of course Lord Shiva will also taunt him later but then what happened Chitra Ketu from the sky said to Lord Shiva what is this you are giving a lecture on renunciation, detachment, how to give up materialistic pleasure. And the most beautiful woman in the entire universe, Goddess Parvati, she's sitting in your lap and she's embracing you. Yet you are not disturbed. Only you can do this. So he said indirectly that, Oh Lord Shiva, you are so great that even if the most beautiful woman in the entire universe is sitting on your lap and she's embracing you, it doesn't disturb your mind. You can still speak on renunciation. You are so powerful. Only you can do this. You are so great. You are beyond everything. That's what Chitra Ketu said. And the Lord Shiva started uh, smiling. <laughs> and the Lord Shiva said to him, you are also no less. <laughs> he said, I am having only one woman with me. Yes. So for me, it's not very difficult to speak on spiritual topics. But look at you. What are you doing? You are surrounded by thousands and lakhs of queens who are equally beautiful. All are like heavenly celestial beings. But even when you are going on a voyage with them in the heavenly planets, instead of indulging in sense gratification and physical pleasure, you are talking about Lord Vishnu and his greatness. Only you can do this. <laughs> so, 
so they are complimenting each other actually yes so and of course then uh, mother parvati she misunderstood him and then parvati cast him and then because of which he became a demon vritrasura and then there's this whole past thing about which we will discuss some other time but what uh, i wanted to say here is from this past time that lord shiva's greatness is beyond anything yes and he is also known as ashutosh which means that he is very easily pleased ashutosh jisko santusht karna bahut aasan hai as they say in hindi so that means any prayer which is made to him with some water and this bel patta as they say na i don't know what bel is it's betel leaf i guess i'm not sure maybe if somebody knows what bel is they can write in the comments in the english so uh this is how uh, lord shiva's worship is done in one way over the shivling and offering milk to the shivling that is one very important remedy which is done and chanting the mahamrityunjay mantra om trambakam yajamahe sugandhim pushti vardhanam urvarukam eva bandhanan mrityur moksha mamritat like the seeds inside a fruit i am stuck in this material world please deliver me urvarukam eva bandhanan मृत्यु और मोक्षिया मामृता प्लीज डिलीवर मी फ्रॉम दिस मटीरियल ओशन यस दिस मटीरियल वर्ल्ड इज लाइक ओशन एज दिस देर आर सो मेनी डिफिकल्टी स्ट्रगल्स मिजरी सफरिंग सोरो देर आर एलियोरमेंट्स देर इज गुड देर इज बैड माई गॉड सो दीज आर दैट इज वन ऑफ द वेरी पावरफुल मंत्र एंड देन देर इज ओम नम शिवाय ऑल्सो दैट इज चैंटेड एंड समटाइम्स पीपल ऑल्सो चैंट ओम शिवाय नम दैट इज ऑल्सो चैंटेड so these are various ways by which uh, we honor lord shiva and then there is this uh, fasting on fridays uh, fridays and on mondays especially yes because uh, monday is somavar so lord shiva has he is known as chandra shekhar who has the moon in his forehead so um, he is also known as chandra shekhar one who holds chandra there yes and lord shiva was the one who had blessed uh, when prajapati daksh had cursed chandra that you will be penniless you will be extinguished you will be wiped out of this earth because he was uh, not giving due weightage to all of his daughters except rohini during that time and then lord shiva was the one who blessed him that he will wean and wax but he will exist and he will have dark spots and that is how the somnath jyotirlinga that came into existence and then there is this mahakaleshwar jyotirling there is triambakeshwar so many are there yes and we have the amarnath jyotirling also yes well lord shiva had explained the divine truths of life and death god and spirituality to goddess parvati and from that time that amarnath yatra is going on in india it's a extremely holy place to go there and as we know in the time of samudra manthan when there was sagar manthan it was complete havoc because the moment they started churning the demigods and the demons when they started churning the milk then halahal poison came out from the beneath of the river yes from the milk ocean yes that ocean there was so much poison my god and then nobody was able to drink this and then there was complete havoc and everybody was suffering the demigods were feeling as if we are going to die this poison is so dangerous and then all the demigods went to lord shiva and they requested oh lord shiva please please uh, save us from this poison only you can save us yes so then lord shiva said okay i will try <laughs> and then he took all the poison and he drank it and then it, the scriptures also say that some versions also say that uh, mother parvati she expanded and she went inside his neck and she stopped the poison from going down into his body and that that is why his this neck is blue in color because this is the poison which is kept here and that is why uh, during that uh, leela which was going on the snakes and sc- scorpions and other poison some insects which are poisonous these days they also took it and especially snakes also contributed to that poison uh, it, in helping lord shiva take that and that's why lord shiva had blessed the snakes that okay you have helped me in taking this poison so whoever worships you will worship me <laughs> yes that is why in india snakes have been worshiped and they are very much revered all they are poisonous so and uh, fasting as i said on mondays and fridays is very important because uh, 
Shukracharya Venus, yes, is uh, one of the great, great, great worshippers of Lord Shiva. In fact, uh, Shukracharya, the guru of the demons, had got this Mahamrityunjay, this Mrityunjay Vidya, by which he could bring back all the soldiers of the demons back to life. And this is how he could uh, sustain the race of the demons. So, Venus, uh, Shukracharya, is also a very great worshipper. So, <coughs> Fasting either on Mondays till till the sunset or on Fridays is very good, especially on Mondays for Lord Shiva, and especially if there are planets which are combust in our chart, then we can always chant Mahamitunja mantra in the night, depending on other factors, of course. But these are the things which I would say, and even uh, this concept of Sade Sati, which is there in the domain of Vedic astrology, you know, this. There's a lot of fear mongering about Sarasati, about which I have not yet spoken, but I will speak very soon about Sarasati. But one of the biggest remedies for Sarasati is worshipping Lord Shiva. Yes, because Shani Maharaj is also a great worshipper of Shiva. And Lord Shiva has this Ekada Shurudra, 11 Rudras. And uh, Hanumanji in the Ramayana, yes, one of the favorite characters of so many people, including myself. So he is the Ekada Shurudra, the 11th Rudra. Yes, so. Once, when there was this Ramayana going on, then Hanuman had freed all the Nagrahas, the nine planets, from bondage of Ravana. And then Shani Maharaj had blessed him that whoever worships you during Sarasati or the Dasha of Saturn, I will not torment that person. <laughs> so, uh, sometimes we run around searching for big, big remedies, secret remedies, some remedies which we have never heard but simply chanting the Hanuman Chalisa can rid us from all the pains, fears and torments of Saturn. Yes, during Sade Sati or during the Dasha of Saturn. So that is because uh, Hanuman is one of the avatars of Rudra and that is how Lord Shiva's connection comes into that. Yes. And there are so many stories, so many uh, things he had also killed uh, this he had also killed those three cities. Na? That is why he is known as Tripurari. Yes, one who had destroyed, demolished the Tripuras. Yes, Tripura. Three means three. Pura means places. And uh, so many other pastimes are there. I can go on and on and on and on speaking. Na? In the Shimal Bhagavatam, this pastime comes about Prachetas. Na? When Lord Shiva appears and then he blesses the Prachetas that you now go and pursue your spiritual path. And then in so many other places also. Lord Shiva appears and in the Mahabharata also we see that Lord Shiva he appears and he blesses Arjuna with the Pashupatastra and he also bestows so many other weapons Rodarastra and so many other weapons yes so many different versions will say about different weapons and he also blessed Arjuna that yes you are on the side of virtue and you will be victorious yes and that's happened that's what happened Arjuna was victorious eventually although that was understood because Lord Krishna is personally there on their side but even Lord Shiva also had blessed yes so Lord Shiva uh, is extremely great <laughs> and we uh, can only uh, offer our obeisances to him yes and during the time when uh, this Kamdev had tried to disturb his penance during that time he had opened his third eye and he had burnt yes Kamdev so that is uh, one of the symptoms that is one of the indications that when lust or sex desire reaches too much, then too much high, beyond our control, it goes haywire, then uh, Lord Shiva will burn us. <laughs> Which means that we should keep that under control. Otherwise, if Kamdev goes beyond our control, then we can get into trouble, yes. As we see presidents and prime ministers and leaders of different organizations and countries, they have also fallen victim to all this, yes. And then there is scandal and then there are so many things and then rest is history <laughs> and yes pouring milk over the shivling that is also very much uh, appreciated and what else i can speak so many things on lord shiva he is known as nilkant yes and his vahan the uh, animal which is there his most intimate associate his name is nandi nandishwar and he is all, he is the bull actually yes and he is always waiting patiently outside Always waiting to execute the instructions of Lord Shiva. Always waiting when Lord Shiva will give me some instruction that I can execute. And even if Lord Shiva is not giving any instruction, for millions of years he is meditating. 
Nandi is still waiting patiently outside. Nandi is waiting. He is bowing his head and he is waiting like a patient servant. Waiting for his master to come out and to speak something. He is the epitome, the emblem, the pinnacle of all servants which are there. So Nandi's uh, example is very important for us to study because Nandi will teach us how to behave with the master. How should a servant be? Yes. So Nandi is an exceptionally great personality and he is also very much loved by Lord Shiva and Parvati and he is trying to tell us that sometimes or not sometimes, every time or almost all the times the master can give us something or he may not give us. Yes, he may give us darshan. Yes, which means sometimes people say, oh, where is God? I don't see him. If God is there, he, I should be able to see him. No, Nandi never says, says like this. I have never heard Nandi speaking like this. Yes, that's very arrogant to say like that. If God exists, he should come and see me. Come and give his darshan to me. Why should he come and give you darshan? Yes, yes. So what's so special about you? But yes, if you are special, then maybe he will come. But the point here is, we may get things from God which we want or which we don't want that also God may give us sometimes if that is for our good. But Nandi exemplifies this teaching that you should serve completely selflessly without any expectation of profit, adoration, distinction. Yes, not that he's expecting. Oh, now Lord Shiva will come out of his penance. Now he will give me some pat in the back. Oh, Nandi, very good. You are perfect. You are too good actually. No, he's not expecting like that. He's just sitting there in meditation. That Yes, I'm just meditating on Lord Shiva. If he comes out and sees me, that's good. If he doesn't, then also that's fine. He is not concerned with uh, the personal association of Lord Shiva. He is more concerned with executing the instructions of Lord Shiva. Yes, that's why they say that there are two kinds of association. One is Vani and the other is Vapu. Vani is the association. Association uh, both both of these represent one association through the speech, and another is through personal. Uh, presence so sometimes what happens vani and bapu we may not have the guru physically present in, in in front of us yes but his instructions are always there so nandi may not be very close to lord shiva always he may be waiting outside but he always is meditating on what lord shiva said to do yes and he's always eagerly executing those instructions so sometimes in our spiritual life we may be connected to some senior or some guru who may not be there with us all the time yes and then we might have to uh, stay away from them for some time but even though we are physically away yes but the vani has to be there vani means the speech so whatever the guru has said that we should uh, try to execute so in that case even if the person is there or not there physically it will not hamper our spiritual life yes and mother parvati also she is goddess duga she is mahamaya and she is the emblem of all the good qualities and she is like bhavani yes she is uh, part of lord shiva only that as they say na, ardha narishwar means half is men the half the other half is women so lord shiva and parvati they are the divine couple and that is why we need to study them and the most important thing we need to understand from their interaction is that they are always discussing about spiritual topics. So, whenever we are sitting with our spouse, that is how we should behave actually, yes. So, ideally the wife should be asking questions and the husband should be answering. But for that, the husband should know something also. <laughs> but no problem. If he doesn't know, then let him ask and you answer, okay. Because sometimes uh, some wives may be more uh, spiritually elevated than their husband. So, not a problem. But the point here is not who asks and who answers, okay. <laughs> the point is, you should have those discussions and if you both don't know anything about spirituality then at least you start discussing something okay somewhere something yes all right so that is it from my side so this is the lesson which lord shiva and parvati as the perfect couple the divine couple they are trying to teach us that ultimately you have to become spiritual yes otherwise there's not much in this material world for us to be happy as lord krishna says in the gita dukhalayam ashashvatam napnuvanti mahatmana samsiddhim paramam gata so it is very much recommended that we focus on our spiritual path, on our spiritual principles, on our spiritual practices and then arrange our life in a way which encourages those practices. Yes, and stay with people, visit holy places, meet holy people, go to satsang and read the scriptures with our family, with our spouse 
and then by that on our lord shiva and on ma shivratri we can visit the temple of lord shiva and we can go and simply say thank you or we can chant the mantras which i said or you can go and give some milk or you can give some donation some charity or you can fast also whatever is good for you according to time place circumstances that can be done okay so i hope i did justice to lord shiva for 30 minutes <laughs> this is not possible it's not possible to speak about him uh, in one video it will take millions of lifetimes but keeping the consideration of time i would restrict it to 30 minutes okay so that is it from my side wish you all the best for mars shivratri celebrations and that is it if you want a consultation then approach me through my website oh this is shaking <laughs> and if you want me to make any other video then let me know and if you are new then please subscribe and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who wants to know what to do in shivratri okay and there are some specific things which you might also want to do that you can go to the local pandit and then our local temples they may have their own rules in south india in north india so many other things are there in india and india is a very complex place so you can do that according to your convenience time place circumstances and your desire okay that is it from my side wish you good luck bye bye see you